Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to cover another mod review, but this one is quite specific. Fenris Wolf's Laurelorn Forest. Something to tide you over until we get the new Wood Elf DLC. This is a work in progress mod which not only adds in new units and new legendary lords, but also gives you an element of choice when you start, leading to some replayability. Now before anything, this mod is indeed a work in progress, and there are some things which the modder wants to implement which are not implemented just yet. However, the mod itself is extremely enjoyable, and we're going to check it out just now. Now as I said, there is an element of choice, just because RAL shows here as a custom legendary lord, Lord doesn't mean you have to play as her, but we'll get into that in just a moment. As usual, with all the mod reviews on this channel, a new campaign will begin in easy mode and easy battles, this is simply just to show off the mod as much as possible. As soon as you begin your fresh campaign, you'll be given a dilemma to see if you'd like to play as Ariel, the Queen of the Wood Elves, or Mariseth, the Queen of Laurelum Forest. This is the main choice here, it doesn't lock any units if you pick one or the other, and there are no special mechanics linked to one or the other, barring how you get access to the Oak of Ages. These are just unique legendary lord characters created by the modder. They have their own mechanics, abilities and such, and if you pick one, you will not be able to get access to the other. This is the element of replayability that I was mentioning earlier in the video. Since you have the option, you can play it twice to experience the campaign in two different ways. Now, for this, I'm going to show off Ariel, but later on in the video, we shall show off the other legendary character. As soon as you pick your character, your army will spawn. They'll be outside the Laurelon Forest, and there will be a rogue army consisting of the other possible lord choice and some new units right in front of your city. It's up to you to destroy them, which early on in early difficulties, it's pretty much easy enough to auto-resolve. Early campaign, you'll start to get your bearings. You will notice that you can't recruit any single type of tree units. Instead, your campaign itself revolves around elven units and monsters units. We'll get to them in a little bit. It's rather interesting to have a campaign to start outside of Athaloran. You don't have the protection of your other possible elven allies. In truth, now you're pretty much alone, which actually makes things a tad more interesting, as now you're out for yourself. Now you can decide to seek diplomacy with the other humans as you make your way back to Athaloran in an effort to wrest control of the Oak of Ages. Or you could decide to ignore Athaloran altogether, you don't actually need it for this campaign, which presents to you an opportunity of a reign of terror if you so wish. Ariel herself is done fairly well, a unique playable legendary lord character with her own skills, character specific spells, and a bunch of different other things that you can just mix and match as you please. You also have the element of choice where you can choose to buff up your elves or buff up your monsters. Bear in mind that if you pick one, the other is locked out. In terms of spells, she has a selection of various different forms of magic. In truth, I would have given her at least two or three laws as a full law master role, but this works well and is rather balanced. It's not just two legendary lords implemented into this mod, instead we have access to four, where three of which are playable at any given time. Other than the respective faction leaders, you may also recruit the Sisters of Twilight, as two separate legendary lords, but we'll check on them in a little bit. Let's focus on the main faction stuff before we start to get distracted. In terms of buildings, there are a few unique ones, the most important one being the faction's landmark, which gives you a host of new units and some benefits to your faction. Most cases, everything else is pretty much as you can expect, barring the fact that you're obviously missing out on the big tree kin and tree spirits. You're perfectly fine without them. The new units added in, specifically the monstrous beasts, are quite powerful and more than make up for the loss of the tree spirits. There are quests revolving around this mod, more specifically to regain access to the Oak of Ages. Right now, it's kind of bare, but then again, this is a work in progress mod, so if you want to give it some time and see how it progresses, you can do so, however, I'd say it's still very playable in its current state. This mod also introduces a new hero character, the Ghost Rider. 
a hybrid melee, ranged and spellcasting hero. It's honestly quite overpowered and probably needs a bit of a tune-up. The spells won't be seen in its skill selection tree. It seems that they're already hard-coded with the actual hero, but it is quite powerful. I played a decent amount of time with this mod and there were many cases that this hero was racking up a lot of kills. Obviously it will be very useful when it comes to harder difficulties, but in lower difficulties the hero basically made most battles a cakewalk. I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, having gone straight to Atheloran and conquering it fairly easily. There is a little bit of a bug here where for some reason you can declare war on yourself. I'm not sure if the developer is aware of this, and I didn't test what was going to happen if I did, as I didn't know if I was going to end up somehow declaring war on myself, but I did know that I have allies which were military alliances, and I wasn't really willing for them to attack me whilst I was away. But simply dropping the siege on yourself, and then occupying it, will drop the problem. You will have also noticed that once you take over, your quest will complete, and the following quests themselves will focus around you building up the Oak of Ages. These quests tend to reward quite powerful epic quality items which are quite good and you can give them to generic lords to make them as buffed up as possible. But we're not going to go too into this as I would obviously like to leave some stuff for the player to discover by themselves. What we're going to do now is look over the Sisters of Twilight, both of them their own unique legendary lords with their own unique items, mechanics and so on. I'm not too sure how I feel about having the two characters separated, but obviously engine limitations do become an issue here, so it makes sense for two characters to be created separately. Both characters themselves are very much the same but also different. Yes, it's a bit contradictory to say that, but then again, that's what these sisters were about, the Ying and the Yang in a certain sense. There's only one problem I have with both characters specifically, as they both have access to skill points which firstly, one reduces 50% of your army's upkeep, and then there is another one which reduces it by a further 5. That's a 55% upkeep reduction for your full army. It's a tad overpowered in all honesty, and might need to be fine tuned a little bit especially since you're not really bringing that many expensive treekin anymore. But that being said, the lords themselves play fairly well, and it is nice to have multiple different legendary lord options, as it seems that there might be an issue when trying to confederate with Orion and Durfu. You can also recruit them as from turn 1, should you have the income, but obviously wait a little bit so you could actually field multiple armies. Starting a fresh campaign off once again, but this time not picking Ariel, we've got our new legendary lord. Madisif herself has been programmed to be more of a melee based lord, you're not getting any fancy spell casting here, but rather just sword and board. Her mechanics and skills themselves are focused around trade and buffs. In all honesty, this is my favourite choice out of the two, as she is so dramatically different from the other Wood Elves. While this might not be everyone's cup of tea, and understandably so, it's rather interesting to field a elven melee based force rather than relying on bows and magic. There are not many unique units added through this mod. In truth, all of which that are added can be found in this video right now. I'll be going over them so you could check out their stats and so on, and I want to offer some final thoughts regarding this mod whilst I do so. The mod itself is fairly enjoyable. A few things need to be worked on, but then again, it is listed as a work in progress. The modder himself acknowledges this in a very similar sense to how the OVN skull system works, where he claims that the mod right now is 3 out of 5 skulls, and in truth, it's still very playable and does present for an interesting opportunity for the Wood Elves. This is not a massive complete overhaul, at least not at the very moment, but it does present a different way to play around as the Wood Elves and should hopefully tie people over until the eventual release of the official Wood Elf DLC. Playing as the Wood Elf faction but losing out on the toughness of your tree spirits does present interesting playstyles for yourself. There are a few obvious bugs like zooming out too far, you won't see the great white stag, it will actually just disappear but nothing that is game breaking whatsoever, or at least what I've seen so far. If you're interested in playing as the Wood Elves but want a new experience whilst you wait for the new DLC, I do recommend this mod, and it will be linked in the description below. However, it is also possible to wait a little bit as the modder carries on adding in some extra mechanics, some new units and maybe some visual changes. But as stated earlier in the video, it's very playable as it is right now. 
Thanks again for your support in regards to the mod series and if you have any mods to recommend, please join the official channel discord and recommend them over there. That way I can check them out myself and show some light on some lesser known mods. But with that my friends we've come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.